There's a Hulk T bud. Hey, what's up, you guys? Shardimus Prime here doing another Hot Toys figure review on the Avengers Age of Ultron movie masterpiece MMS 289 Hawkeye 1 6 scale collectible figure. If you're trying to pick one of these up, they are available now. Big, 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 big. Get your big badass toys at bigbadtoystore.com. Click the link in the description below. Really cool looking packaging over here. Like the other Age of Ultron figures, we get the big A for the Avengers. Then we get this purple Hawkeye. Then on the side, you can see Hawkeye written in silver. We get the silver right there as well. Then on the back, not much going on with the A. Then we get the feathers from the arrow. And then up top it says Hawkeye. And at the bottom it says Avengers Age of Ultron. Lift this up to reveal the figure. Come on. And there you can see Hawkeye right over there. I like this little purple trim thing. That looks pretty cool. Got all these lines right here too. And then it says Hawkeye. And then on the back you can see all the people responsible for making the figure. Then we get the arrow feathers again. All right, let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's Hawkeye out of the packaging. I really like this figure a lot. He has some really cool accessories. I really like the arrows. The arrows are really badass. I like the bow too. He comes with two different bows. I feel like the likeness is very accurate to Jeremy Renner's face, so that's awesome. Unfortunately, he does not have ankle pivot. That frustrates the hell out of me, especially because Hot Toys keeps putting movie masterpiece written on the packaging for figures that don't have ankle pivot, and I feel like there should be a law that if you don't have ankle pivot on the figure, you can't call it a masterpiece, man, because you can't get him to stand in dynamic poses, and that's really one of the elements to having a masterpiece figure is getting really good articulation on there. So, all right, I'll stop ranting. Anyway, let's take a closer look at the accessories and we'll take a closer look at Hawkeye. First off, you always want to look through the directions that come with your Hot Toys figures or else you may risk breaking it. So here's a look at the base, which I think is pretty cool. I saw up the bottom of this review where he mentioned that he wishes all of these just came with the standard adjustable cradle, which I actually think isn't a bad idea because this does take up a lot of shelf space and especially with that lack of ankle pivot, we need to have him on a stand. But anyway, looking over here, you got the Avengers A and you have that same design going on and it's got that rough texture over here and then it's all smooth right over there. And you got that little plaque right there that says Hawkeye and then here's the cradle and you can pinch that and move that up. So here are all the accessories that come with Hawkeye. He comes with a lot of stuff. So first off we get the five interchangeable hands over here. We get two hands for the right side, four hands for the left side. Then we get these pegs right over here in case you break those for the wrists. He has also these little arrows that you could attach to his ankles. You get these super long ones right over here that aren't removable from this little piece. Uh, you get the quiver which is split in half at the moment. Uh, there's only one short arrow and you get ten long arrows and then ten arrowheads. Uh, which are basically three different arrowheads, but they're all mixed in right there. And then you get these six different unique arrowheads right over here, which are actually really cool. And then you get two bows. So you have the bow that has the string. This is the one that I actually prefer out of the two of them, you know, especially because it has the string. But I like how it has these fake joints right over here. You know, it doesn't actually fold up at all or anything. And this is very elastic. You're able to pull this very far back, which I think is great. And I think this is painted out very nicely. I like this purple right over here mixed with the black. It really reminds me of like carbon fiber. Yeah, some nice plastic right over here. So that looks pretty good. Then you have the collapsible bow right over here, which is really cool too. I like this one a lot. And it just swings out right here and it has another hinge right over there. So it has two hinges on each side. Same thing on this side. So another demonstration and boom, there it goes. But unfortunately no string, you know, and it does, it's about the same size as the other one too. Just feels a little bit heavier, but you know, for your bow comparison, actually they're the same exact size. Now for the right hand, we get a bow gripping hand and then you have a relaxed palm hand. And then for the left arm, uh, you get this other hand right over here, which I used earlier for holding an arrow and you get that little gap right there. So you can put the end of the arrow right in there, which I really like. Then you have this larger grip right over here and along with this one right here, which I like too. So you could put the string through the pinky or you put it right through there. And then you have the relaxed palm on the other side too. And here's a look at the bundle of arrows. So I guess this is nine arrows in total, you know, three groups of three. And I think this looks pretty cool. I like this wash that we get over here. It looks really nice. I thought that one of these hands that had this, one of these unique poses over here for pulling back arrows was meant to hold this thing, but apparently not. It looks like just the relaxed palm hand is actually best for getting this thing held. You know what I mean? So that looks a little bit better, I think. Here's a one half of the quiver and you can see we basically get three different arrowheads and I like mixing them all up over here so you get this ribbed one right over there this looks like the most regular of all arrows 
And this one looks like it has, I don't know, some kind of electric charge to it maybe or something like that. And looking at this other side over here, you can see that we get the same sets of arrowheads over here. You get that ribbed one, electric one I'm calling it, you know, the regular one. And you can see the filler arrows right in between, like on this second one. It has no feathers at the end, nor does it have an arrowhead. And I really like how that works. Then you can just put this together over here so it snaps in very nicely. And it has these little pegs that stick out of it and everything, and it has a magnet in the middle. And then you have this short arrow over here which looks really good right in the middle and it has just a regular arrowhead. Now on the directions it says that you're only allowed to fit this particular arrowhead on this small arrow, but that's not the case. I can get any arrowhead on there, so I don't know what the deal with that is. See, here we have a long arrowhead and I'm just putting that short arrowhead right on there. Then to compare the short arrow to the long arrow, you can just detach this right over here and then you can see the size difference between the arrows over there too. I like how at the end of each of these two that it has this little space right here so you could attach it to the string. I think that's awesome. And then here's the rest of the big nifty arrowheads, which I like a lot. I think this one and this one right here are the same arrowhead. This one's just deployed and then this one's collapsed. I think this is the one that he used to stab Scarlet Witch in the forehead with, which is awesome. Then he has this guy right over here, which kind of, I don't know, reminds me of a shark. I don't know why. <laughs> then there's that little one that we already looked at. I like this one right here. It has some of the red right there. Then this one I actually think is my favorite out of all of them. I don't know why. I just like this one a lot. Maybe I'm a fan of the color blue. And they also made this space right over here for the arrowhead to rest on, which is a good amount of space. So it's very easy getting the arrows all lined up in here and having him displayed holding the arrow with the bow. When you see the two halves of the quiver put together like this, it just looks really good. You just get this huge arsenal of these different arrowheads. And arrows just looks awesome and I like how we have this nice weathered effect too on the quiver itself I love that that looks really really good nice textured sculpt and detail on this very very impressed with this then you just have this little piece right over here that plugs into the back so you can see on his back there's just a little bit of a slot right there and just slide that in. Unfortunately though, this does come off somewhat easily. It's a little delicate. Whenever I end up posing him, I end up taking this off first and then I try posing him around and I put it back. Then these little magnetic guys right here for the boots are pretty cool too. I like that wash that we get over here. Looks very good. And his ankles are, or his boots are magnetized also. So you just attach that right there. They stay on okay. They have a tendency to fall off very easily or get moved around a lot, but you know, I kind of would have preferred something where it could just tab in. I don't see the reason to remove these and put them back on. And here's a look at the head sculpt. Again, I think it looks really good. Very much bears the resemblance to Jeremy Renner. I think that's great. I really like the hair on this figure too. I think they did a great job of sculpting it. And I think the color variation that we see over here is really good too. Uh, we got a lot of dark brown and then you get some lighter brown right there highlighting it. But going back to the face sculpt over there, I just think that looks awesome. It really does look like him. I think the eyes look really good on this figure. The eyebrows, the flesh tone, little wrinkles on his forehead. I think his mouth and the five o'clock shadow looks very accurate. He has his shades over here, which I really like a lot. They have this purple tint in there. I think that's great. And you just want to put these right on top right there. Uh, the directions say not to leave these on for an extended period of time or else it may damage the figure, which is like, okay. But yeah, so that looks pretty good. Rests on his eyes very easily and doesn't fall off too easy or anything. So you can shake it around if you want to and it's not falling off. And I really like the rest of this figure too. I think this trench coat is really awesome. I like the texture that we get over here. We get the zipper that is actually functional. So if you wanted to remove this, you could. I haven't fully taken it apart, but I did open it up to reveal the shirt underneath. And here's what that that looks like. Hey, you want to see my arrowhead, baby? And you can take that other shirt off too, but I'm not a fan of really disrobing the figure so much. But looking at the arm over here, you get some nice buckles and pieces right over here. You get some really good elbow articulation on this figure too. And then you get this little wrist guard section right here, which is a little irritating when trying to interchange the wrist, but it's not extremely bothersome. And looking at this other side, you get some more straps and everything, which look really good. I like this light red trim that we get right there. One thing that's a concern for me about this figure though, is that when I have him post with his elbow bent all the way, which is great because he has the double jointed elbows, you start to see some uh, some stretching right there and I feel like this may not be able to stand the test of time. I don't know. We'll only really be able to tell for ourselves in the future, but for right now, it's like, yeah, that's, that looks like it's kind of going to rip. And looking on the back right over here, you get another zipper. I'm going to remove the quiver so you can see all of this. So a lot of nice soft goods on this figure. I guess you could zip this down if you want to. I don't really want to mess with that. You kind of get this fishnet thing going on right there. And looking at the front, I really do like the trench coat and he has some nice blue pants and you get some more little buckles and things like that coming through here. Pretty good looking boots, you know, they're not bad and they do have some paint weathered right there at the bottom for the treads. 
And looking on the back right here, you got these rubbery parts right there around the joint, which I think is pretty nice. So yeah, not a bad figure. You can move the head all the way up. I think that looks really good. I like that a lot. And you can get him moving all the way down too. It kind of runs into the zipper right there, so you kind of want to be careful with that. You also get side to side movement at the head right here, along with side to side movement at the neck and straighten that out. You also get some neck pivot right there. And then you also get an armpit joint that moves in and out at the shoulder. The shoulders moves outward that much. Same thing with this side over here. And you can move the shoulders forward too. You get a bicep swivel. You get the double jointed elbows. The wrist moves side to side and they hinge up and down. You get some pretty good ab crunching over here. I didn't expect to get so much movement with the torso, especially having this big bulky trench coat right here. But you can get the waist joint and the diaphragm joint to get him to bend that much forward, which I think is very good. And you can get both of those joints moving in a way where you can move him backward that much. So I like that. Uh, you get side to side movement over here at the diaphragm. Because of this big piece right here, the diaphragm joint and the waist joint kind of have to move as one. So you can see them both pivoting together. They can move that much. And then both of those joints moving together, you can move that much. And then you get side to side movement here too. So you can fully rotate right there. And that's mostly just the waist joint that's doing that. The hip joints can move outward that much. And he can kick forward pretty far and move back some. You get an upper thigh swivel. You do get the double jointed knees over here, which bend in very far. I like that a lot. And then you get rotation at the ankle, so you can rotate this side to side, but that's it, no ankle pivot at all. So this is a 1-6 scale figure, and Hawkeye's just standing a little over 12 inches tall. And then here's Hawkeye compared to my other two Age of Ultron Hot Toys figures. We have Mark 43 Iron Man, and we have the Black Widow, and I think he fits into scale perfectly with these two. And then here's Hawkeye next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. Hawkeye, huh? So you got some pretty good aim, do you? Well, you know, I could whip just about anywhere. See that lamp over there? Watch. Nailed it. Bet you can't hit it, huh? 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 Go for it. Yeah! And then here's Hawkeye on one of the dynamic pose stands, which I always really like. So, I don't know if I'm going to keep him on one of these stands or not, but regardless, I do think it's a very cool figure. Of course, I'm complaining like crazy about those weak ankle pivots that don't exist, but still, a very good piece. And I hope you guys liked my review. If you did, please hit the like button. Click any of these boxes over here. If you want more shart in your face, check out my Patreon account. Your guys' help is much appreciated. Also, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and go to MarvelousNews.com for the latest in Marvel-related news. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. That's crispy. Check out my calluses from playing drums. Yeah, nobody cares.